maybe just take back a little bit and go back to your injury a year ago. It sounded like and looked like when you came back that maybe you had a little different perspective on things. Is that a fair observation or not? I think so. I think it was a healthy amount of time away from the game. Mm -hmm. uh, got a chance to kind of step back and appreciate it, something that you're not really afforded when you're, when you're in the mix. So, uh, yeah, I guess there are kind of two ways to look at it, and I, I chose to try to take the more positive narrative and, and try to learn and, and appreciate you know, everything that we have at our disposal here. So the appreciation was important to get at that point of your life? Well, I think there was so much, uh, so many issues mm -hmm. leading up to the, the actual clot itself when my arm blew up, um, mm -hmm. the, kind of the constellation of things, and having them tell me it was all related to the, the, the rib and the clotting mm -hmm. was, was more of a relief than anything. It's kind of hard not to be grateful um, when you're sitting there and the doctors are telling you all the you know, things that, that, that could have gone sideways yeah, right. uh, had it not been kind of figured out when it was. So, To be a consistent player in this league, what does that mean to you? Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to professionalism, um, comes to your, your, your preparation. I mean, teams are so good. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, sometimes it's, it's a completely different game night to night based on the system and the, the, the team you're playing and their identity and you know where you're playing. So um, I think it just come, comes down to game prep. I mean, over an 82-game season, law of averages kind of takes over, so it's just trying to do the right thing over and over. You're 440 games into your career. Um, how has that experience now come into what you're doing next game? It's not kind of living and dying with whatever happened the shift beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. doesn't, you have to understand that it, it, that's independent of what's going to happen in the next shift. And as a young group, you, there, there have been stretches this season where we work a team for 50 or 55 minutes and we have a five minute lapse where we not necessarily you know, stick to our structure and it ends up biting us. So um, I think that that's something that you learn over the course of your career. To me, again, you just seem happier, seem more involved in what's going on here. Is that okay to say that? Happier. Happier, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's what you're, you're observing, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think uh, prior to the injury, I was yeah. one of the youngest guys, and then mm -hmm. when I came back from the injury, all of a sudden I was one of the senior guys. Um, sometimes when you're a young guy, uh, you just kind of want to put your nose down and work hard right. and stay off the radar. So right. maybe a little bit more comfortable. Good. I guess. Um, I mean, I've been here for a bit now, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, everyone has good and bad days, you know. Uh, but I think that the bad days are few and far between, and it's, it's easier for me to kind of get out of my own head and right. take a step back and get away from that and get back to appreciate and playing in the National Hockey League. You talked about the guys that have been through it. It's just probably you, Mark, and Hank, right, in the old days. And the better days far, far outweigh. And not that there were a lot of bad days, but... It's that old consistency thing and just uh, being a better player longer periods of time. important part about uh, being a professional athlete and playing the number of games that we do, and you have to arrive at the conclusion one way or another that, that, that beating yourself up and blaming yourself is just as bad as blaming other people. Mm. Um, I mean, no one has higher expectations um, for me than me. Mm -hmm. um, but, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, my, my heart's in the right place and I'm, I'm trying to make the right play. and I'm, working as hard as I possibly can and it, it's about working working smart and not just working hard so uh, when you can you know let yourself off the hook I mean, it's an inconsistent fast game right. you're gonna make mistakes the best players in the world make mistakes right. so um, as long as you're you're working hard and you're you know trying to just just work and not right. think necessarily and sometimes it's it's easier said than done it's a simple sure. concept not necessarily an easy concept but I think uh, as a group and as individuals we're, we're really starting to get that the uh, language thing, is there an aptitude for language for you? You can communicate in Russian amongst different languages. Do different languages come easy to Chris Kreider? I don't know. I mean, with, as, as a group, we're trying to speak English more in the dressing room. <laughs> We've got a lot of Swedes and we've got a handful yeah. of Russians now, and some of the American guys don't speak great English anyway. So. <laughs> I do know you have some fun with uh, Pavel Bushnevich. Um, His English is so good now, though. So it's, yeah, so it is. It's gotten better. I might have helped a little bit at the beginning, but uh, he's really uh, ingrained himself in, 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 uh, in the right. fabric of that group now. Right. So. Oh, good. It's gone. Keep up the good work.